And now, get ready for some sports talk with Denny McLean. Buddy, you're a boy, make a big noise, playing in the street, gonna be a big man someday. You got mud on your face, you big disgrace, kicking your can all over the place, singing, we And here's your host, Denny McLean. Hi, I'm Denny McLean. And I'm Ron Cameron. Welcome to another edition of Sports Talk. And today we're going to talk about a guy named Sue who says he's not a fool. Jimmy Schwartz, will he be back next year with the Lions after this great streak we're having again this year? Dave Rosema will be our guest here today, talk about Jack Morris and a number of other things going on in the world of baseball, including Josh Hamilton's contract that he signed today for $125 million. The NHL debacle, it continues to go on. God only knows if it's going to get over with, but there's a drop-dead day coming up, so they've got to start thinking about it. And lastly, of course, our questions at the end of the show. How are you? At the audience, I'm doing great. Schwartz is always... You don't have another shirt? What are you talking about another shirt? This is a good shirt. I'm going to buy you a shirt this week. I've got many shirts. Listen, Schwartz has already called... Uh, uh, Sue a model citizen all year. Why are they keep kissing this guy's butt? Well, wait a second now. He may be a model citizen. He oh, did yeah, a right, wonder- a model citizen. <laughs> wait now, a couple of days ago, he did a very nice thing. He and a rapper by the name of T.I., T.I. the <laughs> rapper, and uh, Sue, played Santa Claus at uh, DMC, uh, Children's Hospital, uh, for Mike Duggan and that whole crew down there. So, you know, he's done the right thing, he done, he, and he done, he's done a lot of charity in town. So let's not diminish or reduce the importance of that. That's important to those but kids when they come through But he's been a disaster as a player. Well, now we can talk about him. You see what he did last week after his teammate blessed him? One assist, no tackles, no sacks. Your point? The point is, he's been brutal this year. He was brutal last year. The first year he was fantastic. He has done a thing since then. Well, week I think uh, when we get Rosema in here in a few minutes, I want to talk to him about anonymous statements by players. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anything more gutless than, than a player who you're, who you're playing with is the anonymous source. I mean, and we've been bothered this year by anonymous general managers, and they say in Minnesota or some other place. But you know what? I think it's a gutless way to criticize people. If you've got something to say, either go talk to the guy face to face or do something that he knows who you are so you guys can at least settle the issues. This is a gutless way of doing things. Well, the thing, you see scouts all the time saying what, what teams can do. It's never, they never name themselves. They, this is what we think. This is what we think and all that. And he did that. I, there's no reason for him to give his name. There isn't? No, there's no reason for him to give his name. You mean it's okay? You're playing with, it may be the last. Well, now, on, on, you're talking about on, on, on your teammate? Yeah. But, every, but the thing is, it's throughout the league. They're calling most overrated. They're calling him uh, the biggest bust. Well, I got news for you. When I rip you in the paper one day, I'll, I'll have my name with it. Okay, will you have a name yeah, with I'll it? Have no, it. you won't. Because I'm going to talk about your shirts. And Sue says he doesn't shirts care who says it. He says, if you, want to, if you want to tell me about it, come to my locker and we can talk. Sue says he doesn't even believe it's true, that somebody yeah. is uh, obviously well, going behind his back. Well, the point still remains that he's not the most liked guy around. And you don't have to be the most liked guy around. But his production has gone away. They just ran right through him the other night. Well, whose production has not gone down? Who's? Averill's, I think, has gone a touch up this year. A touch? Yeah. But not enough touch to make no, a difference? No, no, not enough to make a difference in the games. Well, I don't know what they're going to do at this point in time. They've lost five in a row. They're going to play Arizona this week. We've lost nine in a row. And including 58 nothing last week? How does a professional football, how does a professional anything lose 58 to nothing? I don't quite understand it. They obviously quit in the second half because it's my recollection that the game was 0-0 at halftime, wasn't it? Or close to it? It was, it, was, it was low scored in the first half. Really low score. Does Schwartz still have some goodwill here? I the, think so, but he, he's got to get his act together and start disciplining these players. Next year, you're gonna, if, if you have problems off the field like you did this year, then the, the, the fans are just going to get fed up not coming out. See, I've always thought that when a team, no matter if it's basketball, baseball, football, or whatever, when a team always goes into the tank at a certain time of year every year, it's the fault of the coaches because, or the manager because they haven't managed or coached in such a manner that allows the team to be strong at the end of the season. And that's obviously what's happened here the last three years. Three years in a row they've gone into these spins. You look at the, the record of the Lions last year and this year after three quarters, it's about the same. It's a fourth quarter. Last year they won those close games. This year they're losing them. 
Yeah, but there's got to be a reason why. Was it just luck? Some of it luck. Don't forget, they shouldn't have made the playoffs last year. The only reason they made the playoffs last year is Cutler and Forte went out with the injury. There's no way they'd have made the playoffs otherwise. They played, they only beat one team with the winning record last year. Well, listen, I got news for you. The Bears have still got Cutler and Forte, and they may not make the playoffs well, this yeah, year. Well, yeah, but they've anyway. had a lot of injuries this year. Huh? They've had a lot of injuries this year. Three of the receivers out. Every, but this is the NFL. Everybody yeah, gets but hurt. They get they get more than the normal, the Bears this year. Erlacher's out for the year now. Erlacher, yeah. uh, yeah, Erlacher's done and for the year. Uh, what do you think uh, they'll do today, the, the uh, Lions? Lions will win today, so don't say I'm ne- negative Detroit all the time. Hey, this Detroit. is the first time you've ever pulled no, for it's, him. No, no, no. I didn't Are you pull. pulling for him now? I'd like to. Uh, yes, I'd like to see him win. You're a liar. No, I'm not. No, I'm not, Denny. <laughs> you, you have better. I'm a materi- realist, Denny. I'm no, a realist. Not. I don't. You're I, the pro Detroiter. I, you had the Lions win ten or eleven games this year. You blew that. I did the, say they win. You 10 had the or Tigers 11. winning in four or five in the World Series. I said they win the World the Series in lose. four or five. That's exactly I'm right. I'm just a realist. You're too optimistic. Well, I don't know about too optimistic, but if if Schwartz are is, you picking the Lions this Sunday? Oh God, yes. I if mean, they they're, don't win this Sunday, everybody listen, should go. If they don't, if they don't win this game, they got to go play a high school team just to make themselves feel better. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they lose this game. I think they're going to win it by thirty or forty points. And, no, and, and they while we're and while we're talking about it, let's talk about Stafford for just a minute. Yeah. Here's a guy that throws for three, four, five hundred yards every Sunday, and he's lost five games in a row. There's something wrong with that. Number number two, he's throwing the ball sidearm. The ball sidearm does not have as much control as it is as as, as in your normal You're place no where you let the, the ball, ball go. The ball tails off and all that. If he doesn't have a sore arm and he doesn't announce it at the end of the year, I'll be shocked. I think he's got a bad arm because I know when I played ball, when my arm started to go really bad, I would drop. You compensate. I, I could not get up on top anymore, and I would move down and down and down further Pretty down. Pretty soon so, you're a Quisenberry. Uh, pretty soon you suck. That's <laughs> what happens. I mean, you suck real bad. <laughs> We're going to be right back with the great, with the great Dave Rosema. Welcome back. One of our dear friends joins us uh, here this morning. Dear friends? Yeah, Dave Rosema is a good friend. Okay, a really I'm good, friend, good not you. friend. Not me. Not you. Well, you need to get your clothes clean. That's what do you mean? Look at you. You talk about you're all wrinkled up. How are you? <laughs> Very well. Hi, I Daddy. have a question for you. How What's many that? games did you win in your career? Sixty. Jeez, I almost won that many in one year. <laughs> You had 55 in two years. 55. You had 55 in two years. Well, you're a better pitcher. I, wait a minute, four-man rotation. We had a five. Yeah, that's the Woo. reason why. Thank yeah. God we got an answer for that. <laughs> let, let me start off with one thing real quick. Morris, um, apparently uh, Jack is planning on the Hall of Fame. Uh, there's one guy I think that stands, unless they go for the guys with the steroids, there's one guy I think stands in his way. That's Biggio. He's got oh. 3,100 hits. Biggio's automatic, I think. Biggio, um, he, yeah, but you know what, Jack? So I, didn't, I didn't know Biggio. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? He played for a different team. Didn't really get the pitch gun. Some Jack I played with for 10 years. You know what? Fierce competitor. I mean, he's got the stats. He's got the, he's got the rings. Got you know, the rings. And everywhere he went, he was a, basically a captain. I mean, Detroit, he was a leader. Minnesota leader. Toronto a leader. Even with Cleveland, when they had their good spurts, he was Was he a real leader, Dave? A lot of players you know hated his he, guts. He, why I didn't? Well, he 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 hated probably you guys. Oh well, no, the media. no! Wait a minute. What do you mean you? I Me? mean, <laughs> you already did it too. But <laughs> the media, because the media, you know, they put things in your face and they say different things. You think you quote certain things. Actually, you're reading the paper. And go. Sure. I didn't say that. He was a jerk, though. Well, you know, don't, sometimes you guys are too. Yeah. Well, so a lot of not so me, it's, not it's, me. It's, no. it's back and forth. But you know, Jack, he could have been. But anyway, he was a good pitcher. He, and you know what? He Com- was the type of guy give him the ball and he win your game. Absolutely. And competition. Oh, he was makes a you a different guy, and especially when you're out between the white lines. You just come off the field. You've got all this uh, juice running. I'm telling you. I, see, I've always believed that don't have a press conference for 30 minutes after a ball game because everybody settles down by then. Sometimes you can get a shower in that time. And then you sit and talk to the guys. But when you come out, especially in a ball game, you lose. Uh, you, you, if, if there's a mistake, yep. you lose. Obviously, anyway, if you lose. Right. But if there's a couple of mistakes that you make to play and you could have won, it's like you don't want to hammer your guys because that's not the way you do it. But all of a sudden, you did. the cameras are in your face, the radio's are in your face. Five minutes afterwards, you know, you're sweating. You go, yeah. you know, give me a break. You say a couple of things maybe you don't really mean. Well, Dave, it's different. Well, he was a jerk when he played, according to a lot of people. <laughs> but yet afterwards, and now he's kissing everybody's butt to try to get in the Hall of Fame. Well, he's in media. No, he's not kissing oh, his butt yeah, to get in the Hall of Fame. I think he has the stats. And well, the stats aren't that good. The, 
Well, wait a minute. He won 254 Denny. games. Denny. Had an ERA. If, if he does get in, he'll have the highest ERA in the history of the yes. Hall of Fame, 390. Yeah. He had 175 complete games uh -huh. in uh, 18 years. That's about 13 and a half a year. And he had 28 shutouts. Right. I think that's pretty good. Oh, no, it's pretty, it is pretty good. Uh, Not good enough for the Hall of Fame. Denny. I'm thinking. Is to Louis Tian in the Hall of Fame? Louis Tian is not in the Hall of Fame. Look at his numbers against Tien Morris. How many, got his numbers. How many World Series did Louis Tian win? He, he won with the Red Sox. No one. one, one. one. Jackson I think that's only one, yeah. Tian had 229 wins. He had an ERA of 330. 330. Uh, 180, about 187 okay, complete well, games. 187 complete games. Shutouts. Well, back in those days, you shut out a lot of teams. Well, the Morris I mean, too. That shut. I mean, you completed a lot of games. Yeah, you you pitched nine innings. I You're mean, right. that's the difference. I mean, I yeah. had sixteen. <laughs> you had sixteen complete. Sixty be in my rookie year. In, nine, in how wins. many years? Nine. <laughs> one. I had more than that and a half. One. <laughs> shut up. I had sixteen in one year. That's Don't a beat lot. him up, Daddy. He's a guest today. You're beating yeah, him up. Yeah, believe it. You're beating him up, Daddy. Uh, let's talk about money for a second. I was shocked. He's rich. I, You're not. I know he's rich. I was shocked to see in 18 years in the major leagues, and, and folks, I don't mean to diminish $26 million, but 18 years he played and he only made $26 million. It's amazing the spurt that's occurred since 93, 94, 95. Right. I mean, by the time he retired, yes, he made $26 million. Yes, that's a lot of money. That's a whole bunch of money. But today, you got a guy s signing the other day, Josh Hamilton. Hundred and twenty-five million dollars oh, yeah. and a better one, Grinky. Jack Grinky. Who's hurt? Grinky. Hundred forty-six yeah. million dollars. With who? I don't who? know with who, but I guess he it doesn't matter. That's a lot of money. The Dodgers. The Dodgers yeah, give him one hundred forty-six million. Now let me ask you a question, Denny. What well, you okay. made that nearly? Did you? I'm gonna. You know, I'm about to have an operation. <laughs> They're gonna cut a whole bunch out of me, right? Yeah. Twins? I'm gonna. No, no, not the twins. <laughs> no, no, we don't want to ever cut the twins out. But you know what? I may get this repaired, get all this off. I can pitch an inning. The, the, you're going to be a closer. We need a closer this year. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, you could still pitch an inning. Well, you know what, Del? No, we can't. No, we, we can't. We, <laughs> we, can't, we can't compete with the 21, 24, 25s. Those guys are strong, fast, mean. We had our day, but we had 55, our day. 56. Because 70. that's right. 70. Because what people don't what people don't realize, and I think anybody that comes out of whether it be high school or college, the minor leagues, you don't realize how quick the game is once you get to the big leagues or any big league at all, NFL, hockey, whatever and it stay, might be. Uh, it's staying healthy, learning it, and because you know what, as a pitcher, I mean, either you, you figure it out or you're yep. not going to be lasting very long. You don't stay there very long because the hitters will figure it out in a minute. They just announced the vote Friday of the most popular Tigers. At this point in time, right? Kind yeah. of at this point in time. First was Verlander. Yeah. Number two was Cabrera. Yeah. And number three Ty, was, what was Inge. Man and Inge? He's not even here. <laughs> that was great. I thought that was great. Inge. Inge, Inge is number three. And Prince didn't make it? Prince didn't get a vote. Prince didn't get a vote. <laughs> yeah, Mike Illich, nice. by the way, was fourth. And Jim Leland was Well, I like Mike. Mike's good. Mike. I like Brandon. You know what? You know what? Sometimes, you know what? I like Brandon. He was my only, actually, he was my only guy on the team I could talk to. He looked at me and go, hey, Rosie, how you doing? We had a conversation. We, we talked hunting. We talked all kinds of things. He was the leader of the team. Well, he was, he was, he was a good guy inside. You tell me some in our organization could not help him out in a swing. He went to Oakland, and he was on fire for two weeks. He was. So yeah. how come it's some like our guys go off somewhere, and they do well, and here we just ship them out? And they don't fix him here. Well, then tell me, go. tell me this: what happened with Granderson? He goes to New York. He has a monster year. Left handers. He learns how to hit left-handed hitters. This year, of course, he still hits 40 home runs this year, and then he no, jumps in the tank in August. No, what no, happens? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it tired. I don't. I don't know. He's looked like he's swinging the bat. He's just maybe pulling his head. Yeah, he is. They That's have so I much thought. IT Wild stuff. Swing. A lot of IT stuff. You know, maybe he has to go in the in, in the rooms and look at his hitting, his stroke. Figure it out. Have some coaches go with you. Come in early. I don't know what these guys Absolutely. think these days. When, when, you got, when you played, did you guys have the cages in the back of the ballpark? Did you have the video had, tape and everything? Oh, you see the cage we had. Had to turn the heat on. The lights took a half an hour to get bright in there. And it, we had to chase the rats out. You know, you know what I keep forgetting? You guys didn't play in a new stadium. We didn't. Oh, That's no. right. We, we were old Tiger Stadium. I mean, no. This was our this was our locker room. We had 20, we had oh, 30 it was guys. Terrible, wasn't it? And we're here's our locker room. Yeah. Hi, hi. That's right. But the thing is, the old tight. ballpark is better than this ballpark. Oh, though. yeah. But, well, 
this ballpark has its good characteristics to it. Yeah, but but it, it, right it, it didn't have the tradition the old one had, the great seats. Um, you're the second deck, you're right on top of the plate. I mean, when I first came in here in 77, it was all green. Oh. And the old scoreboard with all the, like Boston, or Boston has all the scores, you know, going on. The clock, you're going, wow, this is pretty cool. Then he kind of changed it a little bit. Yeah. It took, it took a little bit away. I think the thing that used to get me when it, when it used to get hot in Tiger Stadium, the old stadium, is that uh, if the wind was blowing right, and you know, the, the breeze really went down the, the, the uh, it did. walkways real hard. Oh, Every yeah. once in a while, if you had a big crowd in there, you'd start to smell urine coming in, <laughs> into the, I mean, it, uh, folks, from I'm not the kidding, bound? it That's was horrible. The That's it the bound, it was horrible, and, <laughs> and each guy, would, out, yeah. and each guy <laughs> would look at each other and say, is that Sparma, <laughs> who is that, Freehand, or who was that? I mean, it was, it was really something, but uh, there were a lot of jokes, a lot of stories that came out of this. A lot of bad drafting in oh, Tiger Stadium. Oh, <laughs> man, I'll tell you. Listen, it's good to see you. You're, Thank you, Danny. You've always appreciate been one that. of my favorites. I really appreciate it. Well, we'll do it again sometime. Why don't you ever get into coaching? You. What's that? Why don't you ever get into coaching? Why I, don't you get I, your clothes clean? <laughs> I had a couple Look of at you to talk to me. David, thank you. We'll be, be back in a few minutes. Welcome back. We want to talk about the NHL. There used to be an NHL. There was an NHL. They're still going to play this year. They're going to settle this thing, I think. Well, the owners have put a line, a line in the sand, namely uh, January 15th. Yeah. If they settle it by January 15th, then they can get 48 games. But here's my, here's my problem with this. If they do settle it by January 15th, um, I don't know how they're going to get 48 games unless they want to extend it into July. Of course, they almost do that now. But here, here's the point. Um, you got to let these guys get in shape. I mean, a lot of guys... Well, they're lot, in shape playing, well, most wait, of them. Not most of them. Less than half are playing somewhere. Um, the, and the other bottom line to all of this is the 60% of them are not playing somewhere. So my point is, how do they get in shape? I know they're working out, but iron it's does not make a no, slap no, shot. Not at all. Not at all. Not, not at all what? It doesn't. You're right. I'm, what I'm saying That's is what right. I mean. The, and, and just skating at Troy Ice Arena, which is great, but that doesn't get game doesn't condition do it. or anything else. You got to get, you know, it's like they say in, in football. You got to get bumped and knocked down and hit before you're ready to play in the and NFL or any January other. I don't think January 15th is realistic. I, I think they got to get, get this thing done by January 1. The owners want a 50-50 revenue share. The players still have not agreed to it, despite what we were heard for a while. Mm -hmm. They want a 5% variance limit from year to year. And uh, the owners want a 10-year collective bargaining agreement. In other words, you know, they just want a contract in place for the next 10 years so they can count on making their money. Right. Now, I, don't, I really don't have any trouble with the 10-year deal as long as there's a built-in increase uh, as the league progresses and makes money. If which the league I, progresses. Which I don't think it ever will again. Uh, listen, we've only got a couple cities in America like Detroit. Detroit and the Canadian cities obviously are going to do relatively well. No, but Boston, Toronto, Boston, Chicago, the, New York. The old-time teams yeah. are going to do well. But I'm talking about the Phoenixes and, and cities like that. They should that. get rid of six teams in this league right, now. Uh, right I th now. I think that would be the best thing in the world. Then you'd be settling this right now, too. That and the case. players, listen to this But number. they won't allow that. Listen to the players' uh, problem right now. If the whole season is canceled, it's a billion, billion with a B, loss in revenue for just the players. Now, the owners have insurance for their losses. The players can't afford it. Obviously, that's a big, big number. And the owners go into these insurance companies as a group. The players, unfortunately, haven't got that smart yet and haven't been able to put a package together. You talk about TV contracts, and that's what Donald Fear has got to realize. This isn't baseball. Oh, you, man. You, you, you've got the $660 million the Dodgers just signed. The NHL had... I would, Six, say that again. $660 million for one radio and TV contract. One deal for a number of years. The reason why the Dodgers get away with this and the reason they're able to sell it is Yankees because too. of the Mexican network. Well, the Yankees, too. They, they get the huge, huge... No, I understand it, but we're talking about the Dodgers yeah. for a second. You, no one would ever think that the Dodgers... But you got to remember, they got that Latino audience, and that's what right. baseball is all about. But here's, there. here's the deal, though. In hockey, the whole league got something like $320 million. The whole league. The whole league. Not a team. $320 million what? For everything Profit? for the SPN con no no for the SPN contract and that was a long term deal, yeah, three hundred twenty million that was it. They had a meeting Wednesday, okay, a couple of days ago, and not one. And this this is what I'm mad about. The owners, none of them showed up. 
Not an owner showed up for the meeting Wednesday. Not one guy. Ten players showed up. Not one owner. Now, what are they trying to do? They're well, trying to crush on. them and shut them down. Maybe. But let me tell you, let's go on the other side. Let me be the devil's advocate here. Donald Fear was not supposed to show up for the one thing. Let's keep them out of it. He still showed up. When they said the owners, Bettman didn't show up. The owners were supposed Listen, to meet with the players. Fear isn't the one causing this problem. It's the owners not showing up in good faith to sit no, down and negotiate. No, the did show up on that one. Wait a minute. The players have asked for negotiators to come in from the federal government. They came in once, and you know what the two guys said? This is a waste of time. All they did was blow a lot of money. Now they brought them back again Wednesday, and if the owners don't show up, who do they negotiate with? That was the deal. The owners were coming back. They did they come were, back. They were supposed to negotiate with the players That's Wednesday. Right. And no with the, Bettman and listen, no fear. With the Fed, no, it doesn't make any difference. With the federal negotiators on site in the conference room, and the owners didn't show up. Now, what does it tell you? Uh, where's the good faith? You know, and if the, and if, no you know, and, and I'll tell you this the fans, as soon as, the, soon, well, obviously, but the fans, as soon as they announce it that it's settled, oh, if it they'll does, come flying back. they'll come flying back in here. Somewhere, there's other people in other cities doing some protesting right now, but I don't know. I, I think it's such a small crowd of people that support, supports hockey overall anyway. It really doesn't make they a They better matter. not blow this whole season. That's all I'll say to that. When we come back, <sighs> that coat. When we come a, back, we're going to take questions from our audience. It's not a sweater. It is a sweater. If it is, it's an old rag. No. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, this is a segment of the show that we take questions from our audience here, and we want to invite you down. Uh, come to the studios of WADL here on Gratiot, about 15 mile no, road. No, 15 mile between Gratiot and Harper. Is there a reason why you had to cut me off? Yes, because you were wrong. So that's why I cut you off. Sir, your question and your name, please. Oh, hello. My Hi. name is Ron Rupert from Roseville, Michigan. And my question is, uh, we all love the old Tiger Stadium. And I'm just wondering what your opinion is, if money would have been spent on it when uh, a couple of owners ago, if it could have been saved. I don't think so. Do you, you know, um, there was a great big plan drawn up by Jim Campbell at one time, who was the general manager, president of the club at that time. And Campbell did every engineering test. Listen, I was one of the ones screaming the loudest at the time because I thought they could do something at the stadium to put suites in and do Structurally some other things. Structurally impossible, I think. Uh, the problem was the cement, or excuse me, the steel would not adhere to new steel. So at that point in time, and of course they had the big fire there, the one, the one winner. But uh, at that point in time, without the steel being, being able to adhere to each other, they had nowhere to go but to tear it down right. and do what they did. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Glenn Aldrich from Canton, Michigan. Hi, Glenn. Uh, we had Rosie here, and you had a couple of guys that played college football that were that, for teammates. Um, you guys had a few quarterbacks on that 68 team and that uh, in college. Um, you guys ever talk much football, and did you guys ever go throw footballs around on the field there? Not to my knowledge. I don't. Uh, I, the thing that I saw the most, and and we got in some trouble one time was. We were, uh, everybody had, five or six of us had in 68, sometime during 68, because you got to remember we had a strike going on with the newspapers in 68, which was a wonderful thing. And uh, we all grabbed our sand wedges, and we were trying to see how far we could hit a sand wedge from home plate, and if we could hit it into the uh, seats in center field. Of well, course, about, you know, it's only, it was only 440 feet, so what about it wasn't much players? of a shot. North played football. Freehand was a tremendous football Mickey player. Mickey Stanley was a great, yes. great football player. He's the player. best athlete on the team, wasn't he? At that time, he was the best athlete, <clears throat> one of the greatest athletes I ever saw at that time, yeah. I, I often wonder if a Stanley or a Northrop got a chance to play in today's game, how much impact they would make. Because I think uh, Stanley and Northrop, had they had, had they had to play in this environment with this bad pitching, I think they'd have both, both been 320, 330 hitters. You know, Mickey Stanley came on my show and he said, I said all over again, were you happy you went to shortstop? And he said, I wish I hadn't have gone to shortstop. Yes, we want it. And that's a thrill. That's great. It ruined my arm. I was never the really? same after that. Oh, it wasn't when he played shortstop. Where did you hear this? That Mickey came on the show and said that. I want to hear that. Yeah, Mickey said that. Your name, sir, and where are you from? Yeah, I'm Bob from Westland. Hi, Bob. We've been talking an awful lot about Jack Morris and the Hall of Fame. Yes. My question is, what about Lou Whitaker is the one that I think from that era that really belongs there? You know, we got a couple guys. You're right. I didn't think about Whitaker. Freehand? Whitaker, Trent. Listen, the guy, that's exactly right. Thank you for stopping me. The guy that belongs in the Hall of Fame is Bill Freehand. 
10 or 11 time all-star and he can't get a vote. What is wrong with these legends in their own mind? I'm, and I'm talking about the alumni Hall of Famers that keep him out of the Hall of Fame. Uh, it is a, a disgrace, an absolute disgrace, that Bill Freehan is not in the Hall of Fame. He did everything. He's the best catcher I ever saw. You guys can talk about Pudge. You can talk about anybody Who's you want. He was the best mechanical catcher I ever pitched to in my career. He was just super. You want an announcement? You want to make an announcement? You got to hurry because we're yeah, going off the air. Yeah, my restaurant's opening up. Uh, it opened already now. So Tilly de Tomaine. No, no, no. It's on Northwestern and Beck Road, right by the Lodge Freeway. And you can all come on by anytime, and also watch my or listen to my radio show on the fan today, two to four p.m. this afternoon on eleven thirty a.m. And listen, the food looks just like this jacket. Oh, look! <laughs> it's not a jacket; it's a sweater. You guys have a great rest of the day, Sunday. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody.